Hey everyone, welcome back to the Fuji Guys channel. I'm Gord of the Fuji Guys. The X-T100 is a compact camera from Fujifilm that features a flip-out screen, 24 megapixels on an APS-C size sensor, and more. In this video, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about some of the top features of the X-T100. So if you want to find out more about the X-T100, keep on watching. This is the X-T100. It features an APS-C size sensor. This is actually much larger than cell phones as well as your typical compact camera. And what that allows you to do is to be able to capture subjects with a very blurred background for a bokeh effect. And that really helps to make the subjects stand out from the background. Also with the zoom lenses as well as interchangeable lenses, you have a very wide range of subjects that you can work with. And because you can pair it up directly to your smartphone, it makes for transferring images very quickly and easily. It uses the entire lineup of the X-mount cameras, which are 25 or so in total at the time of this recording, including my favorite, the XF23RWR. The X-T100 also has a 2.36 million dot electronic viewfinder. There's also an automatic switchover, so it automatically goes between the LCD screen and the EVF when you bring it up to your eye with an eye sensor. If you want, you can actually customize whether or not you have only the LCD screen on or only the electronic viewfinder on or with the eye sensor as well. This makes it very versatile to be able to use the camera in the situation you're wanting to. So on bright sunny days, you can actually use the electronic viewfinder to be able to see and review your photos. The LCD screen of the X-T100 can flip three different ways. If you want to take shots on high, you can actually flip it down 45 degrees so you can actually see above crowds. Conversely, if you want to have shots down low without having to crouch all the way down, you can actually flip it 90 degrees. It also flips around so that actually it's front facing. So now when you're taking selfie shots, you can actually see yourself in the image in the LCD screen. And if you're using selfie, you can actually press the rear command dial down to be able to take the shots. The LCD screen on the X-T100 is touch sensitive and there's a number of different ways and controls you have available on there, including touch to shoot. So at that point, wherever I touch on the screen, it, the camera will focus to and then actually take the shot. Or I can change that by simply tapping up in the upper right hand corner to touch to AF. Now wherever I touch on that, the camera will focus on, but wait for me to actually press the shutter button to take the picture. Pushing it again chooses, I choose area. At that point, wherever I touch on the LCD screen, the camera will then pick for its choice, but it will actually wait to autofocus until I push the shutter button, and then it'll, do, it'll take the picture. Or I can turn that entire thing off. At that point, it's no longer going to be touch sensitive when it comes to taking the shot. There's also the ability to change the focus mode in the lower right hand area. At that point I can choose between autofocus single, manual focus, and autofocus continuous. I also have the ability for film simulation. So when I touch on there, I now have all the different film colorations and previews of those colorations coming up on screen. I simply select that I want the one that I want to for choice, for example, black and white, and then I've automatically gone into the black and white taking picture taking mode. The X-T100 uses the same NPW126S battery found on many other Fujifilm mirrorless models. And it actually has, depending on the lens you're working with, up to 430 shots per charge. This is great when you're actually shooting for photos all day long. To charge it back up again, you take the micro USB cable, plug it into the end, and now you can either plug the other end into a USB on your computer or into the AC5VF and plug that in. When I'm traveling, I really like the ability to have a multi-port charger. So I've got a number of USB charging ports on there and it's just a matter of plugging that in. And now I can charge things up like the camera, my phone and other devices all at the same time. Optionally, there is the BCW126S battery charger that you can actually then just put the battery in here. And it's a little faster than many of the other ways that we've just mentioned. The X-T100, like many of our other Fujifilm cameras, offers the ability to have film simulations. And what this allows you to do is to be able to capture a wide variety of the various Fujifilm emulsions in the camera. At that point, you don't have to worry about doing all the fiddling around with your computer afterward to get the same results. If you look at the, on the touch screen, in the lower right hand corner, you'll see the film simulation. All you have to do is touch on that, and then you can actually scroll through the various film simulations, and you can actually preview what the image was going to look like. Simply tap on the cho your choice, and now you've been able to quickly and easily get into that film simulation mode. The X-T100 uses Bluetooth to quickly connect to a Wi-Fi network to be able to communicate with smartphones, be it iOS or Android devices. To do that, you can first pair it up as a Bluetooth, and then from there it becomes a lot easier to set things up. 
all I have to do is turn the camera on and go down to the connection settings, which is towards the bottom of the setup menu. And from there, I would then simply choose Bluetooth and then pairing registration. If I don't already have the app installed on my smartphone, I can then use the scan a QR code on the back of the camera to be able to connect up. But the first time I connect up, I need to start my app and then go into pairing registration. The phone will do a little bit of looking through the various Bluetooth networks that are being offered. You then select it, the camera of choice from the, uh, list, the ones listed there, at which point it will actually connect up and you can actually automatically set the date and time from your smartphone by hitting the OK button on your camera. From there, there are a few other connections to be able to do, including geotagging. So at that point, it will be using the phone's data, I can actually get into the camera and uh, change the um, uh, time and date and location from within there. The first time out I have to actually accept it as a Wi-Fi so I go into the settings of my device and then I choose the camera from my device from the list of uh, Wi-Fi networks. If it's okay to connect to this uh, network the first time out the camera will ask for you for confirmation. Once it's done that it becomes a lot more uh, seamless when you're working within there. Start the app up again and it will automatically connect up within there. I can click on geotagging and it actually automatically transfers the uh, location to my phone, my camera. So now whenever I go out and take pictures, I can actually automatically have the uh, GPS geotagging information stored on uh, my camera images. Now that I've got my phone and uh, camera paired up, now I can go out and start taking pictures with my X-T100. It will automatically remember the GPS location as mentioned. When I power the camera off, it'll actually automatically transfer all of the files that it has recorded so far over to my smartphone. It resizes it to a three megapixel file. This is great for when you're working with uh, smartphones, because otherwise if you have the full 24 megapixels, it'll actually fill up your phone pretty fast. At that point, I can very quickly and easily from within my smartphone, share my images on various uh, social media sites. The X-T100 has a couple of fun 4K features. The first of which is you can actually capture 15 frames per second at 15 frames in 4K. This is about an eight megapixel resolution. The other one that I really like using is called focus stacking. And what you do is you actually then decide on what you want to take the shots of. Normally when you're taking macro shots, you can't have both the subject and the background in the same focus because your depth of field is actually quite small. With the 4K focus stacking mode, you turn it into by pushing the drive button on the X-T100 and then you simply select the foreground and let the camera take the shots. And once it's taken the shots, it will then analyze the images. You then push the playback button and from there you can actually say, okay, I want to be able to create it. And you can actually choose whether you want to set where the focus distances are for both near and far or you can actually select a particular frame of the image that you're wanting to, or as I like to do, is put it into the automatic mode. So at that point, you put it into the automatic mode and the, the camera takes care of processing the image. Once it's done the processing, it offers the ability to save the image and I simply have to push the Q button. Now when I've saved the image, now it actually, if you look, we can actually see that the entire image from foreground to background is a nice sharp focus. On the top of the X-T100, on the left-hand side, you'll find a command dial. Depending on what mode you have the right command dial set to, it'll actually offer different functionality. If you have the right command dial set to SR+, you'd then scrolling with the, right, the left turn wheel, you can actually th go through the various self-timer modes, including buddy mode, as well as two seconds, 10 seconds, etc. If you have the right command dial set to the advanced filter mode, now you, by turning the left mode, you can actually choose through the various settings like miniature, toy camera, selective color, and so on. If you have the right command dial set to scene position, now rotating the left command dial, you can go through things like flower, beach, um, night shots, fireworks, scenes, etc. If you have the right command dial set to portrait, now you have different settings for the portrait enhancer. If you have the command, right command dial set to either landscape or sport or night, now you're into the self-timer mode again. You can actually customize what the left command wheel does. If you push and hold the display back button, then it brings up a menu and you can then scroll down to function dial and you have a number of different functions that you can choose that function to be able to do and it's customizable for yourself. When you rotate the LCD screen of the X-T100 around and automatically jumps into the selfie mode and if you've got multiple people in your pictures, you then use a touch screen to determine who is your actual main subject. At that point, the camera will actually focus on that particular person. 
If you do have multiple people, you can actually then use the front command dial to dial in how many people are going to be in the shot and how close they're going to be before it actually releases the shutter automatically. Or you can actually have it so it sets up so that as soon as you smile into the camera, it will actually then automatically take the shot. The X-T100 has the ability to record HDR images in camera. So you can take pictures of bright sunny subjects and dark subjects on the same image. Because it actually captures a couple of different exposures, you do want to have the camera on a tripod and you want to make sure that your subject stays absolutely still. This is great for landscape photography. To get into the HDR in camera mode, simply push the drive button and then scroll down to HDR. From within there, you see there's a few different options, including automatic and a few different steps in there. And it may take a bit of experimenting on your behalf to be able to get exactly the settings that you're looking for. I'm just going to leave it in automatic for the time being. Hit OK and then take, capture my image. Again, I do want to have the camera on a tripod because it actually takes a couple of images within there. It processes the image and then it asks if you if you want to save the image. Simply hit the OK button and now I've captured the image in HDR. And when I play the image back, I can see a lot more detail in the shadows than I, than I normally would if I just took the one exposure. The X-T100 is a great camera for vloggers in the fact that the LCD screen rotates around 180 degrees to the side of the camera. On this, opening up the side cover here, you'll find the 2.5 millimeter microphone jack. This allows me to connect the mic ST1 from Fujifilm directly into the side of the camera. If you do have a microphone that features a 3.5 millimeter adapter, you will need to get a small accessory item, the 3.5 to 2.5 millimeter option. Plugging it in there, and now I rotate the screen all the way around and I can actually now start my vlogging series if I'm wanting to and be able to see the screen without having to worry about having a microphone in the way. There you have it. There's some of the top features available on the new Fujifilm X-T100. Thanks for watching. If you should have any questions or comments regarding this video, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow us on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook. Until next time, I'm Gord of the Fuji Guys. Thanks for watching.